over, and we thank that person for praying for us. And then we jump out of the healing pool that God's placed us in. We jump out too soon. We're in a hurry to what's next, what's next, what's next. God's not in a hurry for what's next because he's a God of now. So I want to encourage those who have been prayed for. Right now, would you just, just let God just hold you down in this place of refreshing and renewing? Don't worry about what's next or, or do we need to move on. Or just don't. Who are we to hurry God? Some of you have been hurting very deeply. You've been so desperate for so long. It's going to take more than a few moments in, in this pool that God has placed you in. So I want to encourage you, don't get out of it right away. Take the hand of the person next to you right now. Just take hold of their hand and know that you're not alone. One of the things that I've loved about hospital ministry is that I'll go in sometimes and visit whoever it is I'm visiting, and as I'm leaving, God will lead me to another room, to another person who's literally all alone. And I'll go in, and I don't know their story. I don't know what they're going through. There's sometimes when I've walked into that room, and they're sound asleep. But I just feel the Spirit saying, take hold of their hands so they know they're not alone. There's just something about standing in agreement together. And not be in a hurry. literally just what we've asked of God, now we let it happen. So just grab the hand of that person next to you. Maybe they need reassurance right now along with you. But reassure each other that you're not alone. Stand in agreement for God's provision, protection, promises for his compassion where is he where is he I just, guys, this morning feel led by the Spirit of God. There is a, a message that God has given me in our sermon series we're in, but it's going to wait till next Sunday. I'm just going to read a passage of Scripture to you before we close today. Because when God is moving... When God is healing, when God is restoring, what you need most is just his word. You don't need your pastor to preach you a sermon right now. What you need to know is that there is a word from God's word that sits this very moment. Because he wants you to know that when you leave here today, you can go back to this word 
and read it over and over and over again. That's our God. I told you last week that there are changes coming to the, w- the way that we have defined church. <laughs> to let God be in charge of his church. And I'm going to be obedient to that. And I know sometimes I get ridiculed for that. I have people who say to me, God would never tell you that. So are you telling me I don't hear God? Is that what you're telling me? Because I'm going to tell you right now, all of us get to hear from God. God does not go through someone else to tell you what he wants to say to you unless you're refusing to listen. And if you refuse to listen, then he'll send someone to get your attention. But God wants to speak to you directly. Why else would Jesus die on the cross? It was so that the veil would be torn and you would be able to step into the holies of holies and have a relationship with God one-on-one, face-to-face. But I've had people say, you know, you, you preach to people and tell them that they can talk with God, but that is not true. And I, my heart breaks for those people because that tells me they've never experienced the true freedom that God has given us when his son Jesus Christ died for us, shed his blood for us, raised him from the dead, and then said this, greater things you will do than I have done. So how can we, if we think that we can never talk to God, ever think that there's ever a chance we're going to do something greater than even Jesus did when he was on this earth? Jesus didn't say you're greater than him. He's not giving up his power and authority. (laughs) But he did say you would do greater things because of him. Turn in your Bible, Psalm 91. Psalm 91. I'm just going to read it. And then we're going to close today. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for your spoken word. Thank you for your written word. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for your truth. Thank you, God, that you came here today to give refuge to those who need refuge, to save those who need saving, to help those who need help. God, to release those who need release, to take burdens away and replace them, Lord, with your yoke, which is light, not heavy. Holy Spirit, help our ears to be open now to the word. Open our eyes that we may behold wondrous things out of God's word this morning. We say this in the mighty and exalted name of Jesus who makes this all possible. But yes and amen. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare, this I declare, say it with me, this I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. Did you hear that? That's your God. No deadly trap, no deadly disease. Don't receive it, don't accept it. Because it doesn't have power over you. If you truly believe who God is, then one of the things I know about God is He is Jehovah Rapha, the healer. And if He's the healer, then I got to be willing to let Him do it His way. I got to stop fighting with God and saying, Are you really going to heal? When I already know God is the healer but I need to let him be in full control of healing. Amen? He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Did he not say no weapon formed against you will prosper? Why? Because he covers you and he shelters you. And his faithful promises are your armor and your protection. We need to start putting the promises of God and wrap them around us because they are armor. Those promises are our armor, and you need those promises. You know why? Because that's what combats the deception. And this book is loaded with promises, as you'll see in this simple chapter. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrows that fly in the day. Do not dread, do not dread, 
People of God, do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousand are dying around you, their evils will not touch you. The only reason that you will get burned is if you're like that child who when you tell them, do not touch that fire, that's hot, that's hot, that's hot, and they in disobedience reach out and touch it and burn themselves, that is not the result of a God who doesn't care. That is a result of a person who doesn't let God care for them. Don't blame God for your burns. Thank God for the times he saves you from the fire. Especially when he saved you from the biggest one. Amen. It says here, just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. Notice it says it's the wicked that he punishes. Not you. He corrects the ones he loves. He punishes the ones who don't love him. If they're going to be in a spirit of rebellion, then God has no choice but to bring punishment. But you as a believer, God does not punish you. He corrects you. There's a huge difference. Right? Pastor got a little overboard with how he was eating this week, and God had to correct that. But here I am today. I'm alive. And at lunch, I'm going to eat a salad because it tastes really good about now. I'm going to be good, and I'm going to enjoy it. It's going to be the best salad I've had as I share it with my bride of 35 years. Amen? So see here, he says, it's the wicked that are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you. Stop blaming the people in the church and saying, they're not covering me. They don't need to cover you. It's God who's your cover. You need to make him his, your refuge. I had to make him my refuge in the shower. I had to cry out before the Lord and say, Lord, forgive me. But I know that you love me, so I know you're going to heal me. I know you're going to make it possible for me to do what you've called me to do today. Which, by the way, is to read you this chapter. It says here, if you make the most high your shelter, if you, say it with me, if you, right? Then it says, no evil will conquer you. <laughs> no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home, for he God will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. I have to testify to this, guys, as we read this. We were getting ready to leave to go see our family on Wednesday. And we have this barrier that we've put up to keep the new puppy out of the living room because he still hasn't learned how to go to the bathroom in the right places just yet. And as we were getting ready to leave, and I'm all excited, and I'm all full of joy, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's time to leave, and we're going to go see the family and the grandbabies, and I'm just all excited. I was in flip-flops, and I went to step over the barrier, and my flip-flop caught into the barrier that shut, and it shut on my toe. And the pain, the pain. And I didn't say something very nice. And my wife, in love, said, oh, that's nice. Well, when you're done being a two-year-old. <laughs> Where's the empathy? Why won't you feel sorry for me? It's not my fault my foot got caught in there. Actually, it was. I didn't lift it up high enough because I wasn't paying attention. What are you saying, Pastor? What I am saying is there will be times that you will feel pain, but it's in the midst of that pain that you get to decide whether or not God is greater than your pain. You make that decision. I make that decision. But here's the one thing I do know. Whether I make that decision, God is still greater than the pain. God is still greater. And I'm speaking this over everyone in this room today. Some of you were weeping in tears today because you needed refuge. You are in so much pain. But I'm here to announce to you that God is greater than your pain this morning. He is greater than your pain. He's going to see you through. He's going to send angels your way. Look at this. And when you're through with the pain, 
Do you know that there's something that God lets you do after you get through the pain? You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. For a moment, I cried out in anger, and I wanted to crush the little barrier because it was a barrier's fault that I'm in pain, right? But then after my wife spoke truth to me, I went in the bathroom, and I got on my knees, and I said, Lord, please forgive me. I need to be washed. My mouth needs to be washed. How dare I even not praise you in the midst of my pain? You are greater than my pain. And in that moment, I felt that evil spirit that was trying to torment me leave me. And Laura and I left and had a great trip. We had a wonderful trip. Amen. This is what God's going to do for you today. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. Anyone here love the Lord this morning? I will protect those who trust in my name. Those who trust in my name. Oh, you're going to have moments when you're going to question God. Where your faith is going to be tested. But you can trust God. Because even when you're unfaithful, my Bible says he stays faithful. Amen? So even if you're saying, well, Pastor, I just had a terrible week and I didn't do all the right things. I didn't say all the right things. I yelled at the kids or, or I said something to my mother-in-law or, or my wife or stop it. You know what I found out about God and his grace? He doesn't keep yesterday's newspaper. When you woke up this morning, Inez, there was a new headline with new mercies for you. And it was being declared to you and everybody else that my daughter Inez has new mercies this morning. And he's declaring it over you. And you may say, well, Pastor, I'm still kind of processing. In the midst of your process, do not lose sight of the mercies. Hallelujah. Don't lose sight of the mercies. Immerse yourself in his mercies Right now, amen? It says here, when they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. Wow, isn't it funny? Sometimes we're the ones that get ourselves in trouble, and in it, God says, I'm going to rescue you and honor you. Wait, no, hold on a second, God. You don't, it was, I, d ah, and God is like, no, I get it, I get it. But you humbled yourself. You confessed your sin. I'm faithful and just to forgive you your sin. So now we just went from dishonor to honor. God will honor those who honor him. Repenting is part of that honor process. Amen. So it says in here, I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. Anybody here want your own salvation? <laughs> I tried. It don't work. I got hold of his salvation and I've never been the same. Take hold of his salvation this morning. Yes, you shed some tears this morning, but they just got put in a bottle and put away. So you don't have to walk out of here crying in tears anymore. You get to leave here rejoicing. Hallelujah. Amen? Yes. Come on. It says here. Uh, turning my page here. Man, I want to keep going. It's so good. That was Psalm 91 and in a whole. I thought it was a little bit longer, but that's okay. So let me just say this in Psalm 92. It says, it is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to the Most High. It is good to proclaim your unfailing love in the morning and your faithfulness in the evening, accompanied by a ten-stringed instrument, a harp, and the melody of a lyre. You thrill me, Lord, with all that you have done for me. I will sing for joy because of what you have done. Oh, what Oh, Lord, what great works you do, and how deep are your thoughts. Only a simpleton would not know, and only a fool would not understand this. Though the wicked sprout like weeds, and evildoers flourish, here's the news. They will be destroyed forever, but you, O oh Lord, will be exalted forever. Would you stand right now? We're not going to have any music in the background. Just simple chorus. Those who needed prayer this morning got prayed for. And oh, by the way, did we not just 
have our verse of the week say that the prayers of a righteous man avails much. Prayers of a righteous woman avails much. For those of you who prayed for people today, your prayers availed much today. And the rest of you can walk out of here knowing that the situation, while seemingly may not have changed, you've been changed. Amen. I exalt thee.